What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat. Today we're doing a super flex rookie mock draft. Okay, we've done some season long mocks already. Done a lot of best ball action. Make sure you sign up on underdog fantasy. But today we're doing clean, mean, simple, four rounds rookie mock draft. Everyone's, everyone's itching for the dynasty content. They're itching for the rookie content. Make sure you're watching my Tuesday videos. Don't say the cards top list. We're doing a mock draft today. We're going to go through four rounds. This is going to be a super flex mock. We don't play any dynasty leagues that are not super flex anymore. They're extinct. Just like everybody on the big dogs team that sent me that fucking Eddie Lacy video. You're all extinct. Everybody's extinct as far as I'm concerned. Everybody's fired. Nobody's safe. Super flex. Full round rookie mock draft. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into Discord. We're going to send out the invite for this to fill up. Superflex rookie mock for YouTube at everyone. Need 11. Don't be a fraud. We're going to send that out. The zillion people. I didn't even put the fucking link in. Good job, Nick. Boom. And someone's going to be, you didn't fucking put a link. There we go. Boom. Let's switch the screen over to the secondary display, and you've got the draft board. Man, these things fucking fill up quick. Ah, I didn't even get a spot in the draft. Shit, I got to kick somebody. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Y'all knew better. Send it. Send it. I got nothing but love for you, which is actually why I'm not going to kick you. You know, you're fun to talk shit about, so I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you live for a little bit. How do I kick people out? I just told them someone's got to go. I forgot to join it. No one's going to leave. Let's see who sacrifices themselves for the, the greater good of the cause of the video. What I could do, hey, you know what? Fuck it. Here's what we're going to do. I got an idea. We're just going to run it. I'm not even going to be involved. I'm just going to critique and talk shit about everybody. Be in draft. Fuck it. This is actually something that I was, I was planning on doing. Let other people join and then critique the drafts as they go. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we've taught them well. Nick the genius, you are on the clock. Trevor Lawrence off the board. Justin Fields off the board. And this will be a typical start in a lot of super flex drafts. Let's see if they're talking shit in the chat. This draft's going to start. Hi, B. I think someone's missing. Yeah, yeah. Very fucking funny. So we got Trevor Lawrence. We got Justin Fields. Najee Harris, Jamar Chase. I think that's that's kind of typical. I think uh, depending on what happens in the draft, we might see in a super flex league, you're going to see Lawrence and Fields probably go top two in most drafts. I do think something that could change that is if Zach Wilson goes at two to the Jets and then Justin Fields go to four to the Falcons. I don't think that should change anything. I would still much rather have Justin Fields on the Falcons than Zach Wilson on the Jets. But I think in people's minds, that makes, you know, the draft capital makes things get a little weird. But super flex drafts are going to be really, really interesting this year because we're going to have four quarterbacks going to the top 10, possibly five if Mac Jones gets enough hype leading up. So we're going to see Lawrence. We're going to see Fields. We're going to see Wilson. We're going to see Trey Lance. So this is a really good year if you need a quarterback and you have a first round pick. Mac Jones is going to end up being borderline back end, first round, early second round pick in super flex mock drafts. Two running backs, two wide receivers. We have tight end. We have Kyle Pitts up at 106. A lot of people are going to be asking, how high do we go on Pitts? Now listen, 106 not going to be where I take a tight end in particular. We've 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 done this song and dance before. It's nothing new. It's like white people when when Sweet Caroline comes on. Same thing with tight ends in dynasty and rookie drafts. They just don't produce for a long time. Their their, their value, yes, over like a three year period might eventually get there. But I'm not I'm not someone who wants to to sit on a guy like Kyle Pitts. We've learned the lesson over the last few years with the Hawkinsons, with the fans, with the whatever. They're nice pieces to have, but they're not nice pieces. To grab at the 106 when you can get a Rashad Bateman. You can get a Travis Etienne. Those kind of guys. So Pitts 106 a little too early for me. My rookie rankings are available in the draft guide, which should be linked below. But Pitts is probably a later first round pick for me. If you are in a tight end premium league, I could understand if you this there's too much talking going on in the chat. I can't even I can't even fucking focus. Senate, it's probably your your fault, I have to assume. There we go. Looking beautiful, looking mean, looking crispy. Kyle Pitts at 106. Again, tight end premium. You could definitely argue the case putting him up there because the value is just such an unbelievably athletic tight end. He's going to end up playing wide receiver for the most part in the NFL. Not actually, but he'll be lining up in the slot all the time. Uh, just ridiculous production. Stupid athleticism. Going to get top 10 draft capital. The tight end premium, obviously, he becomes endearing, but... For me, he seems like more of a luxury pick than anything else. You know, if you got the 103, the 107, the 110, the 112, if you want to, if you wanted to go with Kyle Pitts because you got a lot of other darts to throw around, cool. If you got one pick and the only pick you got is the tight end, it's not where I'm going with it. Travis Etienne at the 107, Rashad Bateman at the 108. I love me some Rashad Bateman. Honestly, I'd take Rashad Bateman as high as the 106 where Kyle Pitts went off the board. And he's in he's he's basically in the same tier as Jamar Chase for me. Javonta Williams at 109, Trey Lance at 110. I would personally take the fourth quarterback before Javante Williams. Then you have Devonta Smith, Rondell Moore, Jalen Waddles. That's what you're going to see a lot. Like this is this is a very typical first round, early second round 
board for a rookie super flex draft where you have the top tier quarterbacks, tight end, running backs go off. Like you have the top three running backs and it feels like a huge tier drop where you just have a, sh- a shit load run of of wide receivers, Demonta Smith, Rondell Moore, Jalen Waddle. I think for the most part, we see the same top five for almost every every ranking group you find, right? It's Shamar Chase, Bateman, Devonta Smith, Rondell Moore, Jalen Waddle in some order. Some people are getting cute and putting Terrace Marshall up where Jalen Waddle is at the five. And I can understand that. I think you're banking on a lot of upside, right? Like we liked him coming out of high school, Terrace Marshall out of LSU, obviously competing with Justin Jefferson, obviously competing with Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase, but there's a reason why you say he was competing with them and they weren't competing with him because those were the ones that produced. So there's going to be a little bit of risk. There's going to be a little bit of projecting when you're when you're looking at a guy like Terrace Marshall. I do think he has easily top five, top three upside in terms of like what fantasy production we can get out of this class three, five years down the road. So that, that 108 spot's nice right there. Rashad Bateman and Terrace Marshall, like that a lot. The, the, these middle these middle picks here in the second round, like Kyle Trask there, that's just Travis. That's just Travis D. Senate. And like I expect nothing less from you at this point. Senate's just out here fucking running for government. He's corrupt. That's a political statement, I think, by Kyle Trask. He think he's just trying to get me riled up. I know what you're fucking trying to do, Senate. You're trying to make me say something ignorant on camera. I'm not going to do it. I'm a good person. Jalen Waddle, Mac Jones at 2-2 makes a lot of sense. Once he gets drafted in the first round, he'll probably move up to uh, around the one 11 ish spot Tylen Wallace I absolutely love he's like a he's like a you know you look at him he's like ah, he's not really big enough to be too productive in the NFL and then you start looking at guys like Calvin Ridley Tyler Lockett who just get it done they're clean route runners they could play downfield really big fan of Tylen Wallace so that's about where I would have him going off the board I would take Tylen Wallace before those running backs you're going to start seeing the Gainwells you're going to start seeing the Michael Carters you'll start seeing like Chuba Hubbard will probably go off the board within the next like three four picks those mid-tier running backs are just ugly as shit to me I would rather have like right where Tylen Wallace went off the board at the two three this would be a huge run of wide receivers for me like I would take Terrace Marshall over those running backs and the quarterbacks that went off the board I would take Deami Brown Amon Ross St. Brown who I'm not even a fan of but I would still take him over the second tier of running backs you have Najee Harris you have Travis Etienne you have Javante Williams after that it gets ugly man it gets really fucking ugly okay so Tamari and Terry you guys know I love him great pick with Terry I wish Nick didn't make the video so his ADP stayed in the mid third yeah ain't gonna happen baby ain't gonna happen then Brett Coleman put up his top five most undervalued prospects in the class and he put Tamari and Terry at number one he actually DM'd me before he did that he was pissed that I did that so he wanted to put out a Rashad Bateman video and then I beat him to it and then I fucking hit him with the Tamari and Terry as well hit him with that one two fucking little chick McNugget piece all right all right, Alvin, like, let's go. Jamar Jefferson at the 212. So we've got five, six running backs off the board through two rounds, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven wide receivers, six quarterbacks. Here goes the other three tight ends, or here goes the other two tight ends. So most of the time you're gonna see Kyle Pitts as the one clearly first round pick. Most of the time we've seen Pat Firemouth, Firemouth, however you say his name and Brevin Jordan go off the board as the tight end two and three, but I've seen them a lot at the back of the second round, which again is a little bit too, a little too spicy for me though. I don't think like TJ Hawkinson was that much of a better prospect than Pat Fryermuth. So I do think there's, there's some good value there, but looking back on TJ Hawkinson, like picking him at the one of six, seven, eight is definitely higher than we should have been picking him at. Let's see, Brevin Jordan. I, I was watching film on Pat Fryermuth today. I was, I was writing up his rookie profile for the draft guide. I have not got around to scouting Brevin Jordan, so I will have to get back to you on that. Seth Williams, I like. He's like a he's a big body that's going to be pretty athletic in the testing. Broke out at a younger age. I, I, I don't I don't think he's that good as a wide receiver, though. Chuba Hubbard, Amari Rodgers, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore is going to be one of the steals of the fucking draft. I love those back-to-back picks right there. Amari Rodgers, Elijah Moore. See, those are also guys that I would take over all of these running backs here. The whole entire second round for me is basically running back, uh, wide receivers that I want. If Mac Jones falls into the second, he's the best value pick there. But besides him, man, it's it's Waddle, it's Wallace, it's Amari Rodgers, Elijah Moore, Terrace Marshall, Deami Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, Tamari and Terry. That entire second round could be just riddled with wide receivers, and I'd be more than happy. Sam Ellinger. I know Senate's just trying to piss me the fuck off now. Sam Ellinger? Sam fucking Ellinger? You're getting impeached. So if you want to do a rookie mock draft on Sleeper, you want to do a rookie mock draft on Sleeper, what you want to do is set it up to have four rounds, and obviously you want to click rookies only, but to set it up so that you could see the different positions on the bottom, you want the team settings to have one player at each of the four positions, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, not just four flex spots. Because if you just do four flex spots, all of the players are going to be in the same player pool together, and you're not going to be able to look at quarterbacks by themselves, running backs by themselves. And Sleeper has done a pretty good job updating 
because a lot of drafts are going on. So they're using the ADP from those drafts. Dwayne Eskridge is a guy that I actually do like. When I watch the film, he's really, really good downfield. Big time speedster. Could be a player at the next level. Really clean routes, but he is a fifth year player. Late breakout age. So those are obviously red concerns. Ramondre and Trey Sermon, both underrated running backs that I really like in this class. We'll have to see. The, 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 the tough thing about drafting right now with these rookies are just the draft capital. We're pretty, we're pretty sure that Najee, Etienne, and Javante Williams are going to go within the first two days. Najee Harris and Etienne are probably, eh, Najee Harris is borderline first round. The other two are probably second, maybe third round. The rest of these guys, though, can fall anywhere from like the third to sixth round. So we have Ramondre Stevenson at 310. Y'all know I like him out of Oklahoma. This big back, like 6'2", or six foot, like 235, can catch passes, athletic. Trey Sermon out of Ohio State. Guy I'm a little bit weary on, but down at the 311, I'm not mad about that at all. He has such a small sample size of him being productive. He was a transfer over there and then had like two or three really big games down the stretch this year, which is why everybody kind of got acquainted with him. We don't have a, a big a big easel to paint the picture with, with Sermon. So draft capital is going to be a really important thing for him. Anthony Schwartz, not a big fan of Anthony Schwartz, man. I, I don't know. He just didn't do it for me. He's like an, he's like an all-world track star. He's going to end up running like a 4-2-2, but I think that's like what he is. I think there's a few guys in this class that are like that. I think like Anthony Schwartz, I think we'll probably see uh, Tutu Atwell go off the board before we hit the 412. Those guys are more just like fast players. They're they're adding speed to your offense, but I don't really necessarily think they're adding very good football players to your offense. Jared Patterson. Uh, Noah likes Jared Patterson. He said he reminds him, obviously he comes from Buffalo. He reminds him a lot of Devin Singletary, just coming from a smaller conference school. Very elusive, but probably going to be slow and probably undersized. So we've kind of learned our lesson with, with the Devin Singletary type. Fun to watch, not 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 great in, in practice though. Theory, cool, practice, no. Nah. Sage Surratt. Sage Surratt's a guy that a lot of you guys should watch. Big kid, 6'3, 215. He's built like an alpha on the outside. You look at him and you're like, holy shit, like this dude, this dude comes onto the field and immediately looks like the best athlete on the field. He's just big, he's ripped, he he uh he fucking he just balls on people on the sideline. He bullies them, gets down the field, makes most of the catches contested, like it's more often than not a good idea to just throw him up the ball down the field, but he's also like a possession guy. So I really like Sage Surratt. He's a guy that I would look into if, you know, you got you got a plethora of those fourth round picks. Hunter Long, I don't know much of the tight ends later on in the drafts. Daz Newsome. Javian Hawkins is an interesting guy out of Louisville. Absolute speedster. Big production. I'm a little bit concerned about how he's going to weigh in. Right now, I'm pretty sure he's floating between like 190, 195, which is not necessarily a draft pick. I'm 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 crazy about. This is just absurd. These people are just making picks to, to get me going. It's fucking working. Kurt Warner, respect. Javian Hawkins, smaller guy, absolute speed. So it reminds me a lot of like Philip Lindsay though. He's a guy who I think could excel in the right situation. He's flexible enough. He's elusive enough, and he's got like legitimate, legitimate elite breakaway speed. Uh, so Javian Hawkins, another guy that I like in the fourth round. Not a fan of Tutu Atwell. Really like Elijah Mitchell. Y'all know I did a video on him, specifically on him. I don't say the car's topless Tuesday, two or three weeks ago, out of uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Really underrated workhorse size running back, so check him out. And I don't even know who the fuck Jamie Newman or Kenny Yabi, Yabi, Yabi. That was a quick mock draft for y'all, for Kenny Yabi. You know what we'll do? We'll pull up some, some ADP data, actually. Compare it, because we did 20 mock drafts. See, this ADP is available to everybody, by the way. This website is totally not up and in, in, in full functional running yet. But y'all are welcome to use the ADP data for now. Once the draft guide launches, we'll probably put this into the actual draft guide product. We have Dynasty Startup ADP from 72 drafts. We also have the rookie ADP data from 20 drafts. So for comparing the two, peel this out. I want to maximize the two. Apple makes it so hard to maximize and minimize things. Just like make my life easier, you fuckers. I paid like $8,000 for this technology. Put that to the left. We'll put that to the right. We'll minimize my ass. Ski ADP. Yeah. So as you see in the ADP data, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, both top three picks. What are some of the biggest differences here? Nothing really different in the first round. We did see Kyle Pitts go out the 106. We're in the ADP is the 110. So a little bit earlier in this one, Ronda Moore, Jalen. Yeah. So I, you know, the, the almost every draft, the one, 111 to the 2 1 was like reserved for Smith, Waddle, Rondell Moore, which is what I think we'll probably see a common theme for. And then it's like a tier break where it's like, yes, we want to pick Mac Jones because we think he's going to be a first round quarterback. He definitely is going to be a first round quarterback. But we bring him here. We're just not as confident yet. And then all hell breaks loose over here. Kenneth Gainwell at 203, went 204 here. Uh, Terrace Marshall at the 204, went to 208 in our draft. But this is about right. This is like where you see this huge run in the ADP of the 20 drafts of wide receivers. Terrace Marshall, De'Ami Brown, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Tylen Wallace. Kadarius Tony is not a guy I would be taking in that tier. Um, there are just a lot of other wide receivers like down here. 
the Elijah Moores, the Tamarian Terrys, Amari Rogers are all guys that I would take over these running backs as well as Kadarius Toney. The other quarterbacks, the ADP was pretty sharp here though. We didn't have another quarterback off the board until the 307 with Kyle Trask, whereas here he went the 207 and Sam Ellinger at the 307, which is just it's just fucking disrespectful to me to have to waste my breath on it. Yeah, so that's how it played out. I mean, the fourth round's kind of a shit show because most people don't really know all the prospects down here. Surprised Ky- uh, Khalil Herbert didn't get drafted. I think he definitely deserves some uh, some love in the back of the third, early fourth round. Fourth round. That's really it. There's not too many players that I like that were in the ADP that were not drafted here. So thank you all for everybody in the Discord that fucked around and, and uh, did the mock draft with us except for Senate. You could always get bodied. You could always get impeached. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know that was a really, really quick video. Most of these are a lot longer than that, but thank you for sticking around. If you enjoyed the video, let me put my ugly ass face up on the screen. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're doing a lot of dynasty and rookie stuff to get you prepped for your rookie drafts, your dynasty startup drafts. We do a lot of season long content as well. Anything fantasy football, We also just fuck around with a lot of other stuff. So go check out the other channels we got and big dogs. Everything will be linked in the description down below. If you want to cop the draft guides, that will be linked. If you want to get into the Discord, that will be linked as well. I love y'all. I'm out. See you on Fade the Public tomorrow.